Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Today's Mass has been offered for beer in the cast, and we want to pray for Daniel's stepson, Charles. The horse kicked him and broke several of his ribs and his punctured lung. Jim Van Cleve, who is uh, Betty's husband, uh, is in the hospital. Uh, they were on a trip when he came back. Uh, they had to take him to the hospital. And of course, David Nyland is having his heart catheterization today. So please pray for David. And then we remember all the people like Shirley Sewell and Charlie Johnson and all those. Uh, and uh, somebody asked for prayers for a baby that had a uh, stroke. So as we come to pray, lots of people to bring to God. Let us open our hearts and pray from the heart. The prayer of Jesus gave us, the prayer of Jesus and the Father, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Let's begin by calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, words, and actions. I confess to Almighty God that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, and my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do. I confess to Almighty God that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, and my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete 
with what, what he has done for us. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. The right hand saves me, O Lord.
Let us pray for the renewal of our church and for the continued enthusiasm by our parishioners for the quads and for uh, phone calls and the leadership team and the door-to-door -door ministry and the other activities of our church. May God bless and reward. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. Almighty God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for this beautiful farewell discourse. May we be prepared to say goodbye when our earthly life is over and leave a lasting legacy of happy memories through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of the saints. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always find delight in these pastoral mysteries, so that the renewed constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. So we lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, Lord. But at this time, above all, to Lord, yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome and pass the joy. Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Today, a quote from St. Teresa of Jesus and the Holy Eucharist. She's the doctor of the church. Here on earth, it is impossible to perform a more meritorious act than visiting Jesus often in the Eucharist. You're indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we come to know you. By the same Spirit's grace we make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving him thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the Lord. By the cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, our spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
story today begins with another attack on Paul and Silas in Philippi. What happened, what happened to cause such hatred and false accusations? Well, the passage before this explains that it was because Paul called out demons living in a slave girl who was owned by men making money from a fortune telling. Once the demons were gone, she was no more used to them, and they lost hope of any profit she might bring them. They dragged Paul and Silas before the local authorities and accused them of disturbing the city and advocating for customs not lawful for Romans to adopt or to practice. Then our reading begins with Paul and Silas being beaten and thrown into jail, and not just any cell, but put in the innermost cell with their feet secured to a stake. Paul and Silas considered their torture a blessing. They sang songs and prayed as the jailer and other prison, prisoners listened. Then what followed was a beautiful example of God's saving grace. An earthquake. An earthquake opens the doors of the jail and loosens the chains. But Paul and Silas remain in their cell and it prevents the jailer from committing suicide. The outcome of this whole episode ends with the whole family being baptized and converted to the Christian faith. <clears throat> so we know that God works in mysterious ways. He, his plan is always fulfilled, even though we have no way of knowing the outcome. The example of joy and peace Paul and Silas showed the jailer and the other prisoners open the way for a conversion. Praying in the face of pain, singing when all is dark in our world, it led the jailer to des desire whatever it was that was giving these men joy in the face of terror. These first Christians rejoiced in the midst of their torture. They prayed and sang songs to God when they were beaten in jail. They did not accuse God of their misfortune and their suffering. They knew that God does not send us anything harmful. Suffering and torture come from human conditions and from the decisions we make or from the actions and motives of others. The early Christians under considered suffering for Christ a blessing in their lives. And now how do we handle suffering? For one way or another, we all suffer physically, emotionally, or spiritually in our lives. Years ago, I suffered from migraine headaches. All I wanted was for them to go away. I wanted them to be over. I never thought to attach my suffering to Jesus' suffering or even try to understand a minuscule of what he went through or how God's plan could be fulfilled through my suffering. We can either curse our suffering or we can attach it to Jesus by offering it up for a soul or souls in purgatory or for a family member dealing with alcohol or drug abuse. For, we could offer it up for peace in the world. And of course the list goes on. We have many, many things that we need to pray for and to offer our suffering for. And Jesus is there to help us with our suffering. Recently I read something from St. Gemma Galgani. Now this is a saint you don't hear much about. Um, she died in 1903 and she had um, different encounters with Jesus. I uh, read a book about her in the sixth grade. I never forgot about her, but I never heard much about her. However, it was to my amazement and joy when traveling in Italy, I accidentally came upon the house where she was born in the city of Lucca. It was an exciting experience. Last week, there was an account of St. Gemma's encounter with Christ as a meditation in, in the Magnificat book. And it, brought me back to her. She wrote about one of her mystical experiences, and she wrote how Jesus would come and put his, his crown on her head. 
And she says that um, he would push it down. And at one point, he put it on her head and she felt some pain, but he didn't actually push it down. She felt like maybe he didn't love her. And, and so she looked at him, but he understood and he pushed it down. Well, she suffered for a good while with this crown. And then she says by four o'clock, which was much later than just four hours, she said, I presently found myself with Jesus who came beside me. He caressed me and lifted the crown from my head. I then felt less pain. But when he put it upon his own head, I felt no pain at all. My strength returned and I felt even better than before I began to suffer. Not only did Jesus take upon himself our sins, but also takes upon himself our pain. Whenever we attach our sufferings to Jesus, he will help us bear the pain. And we can never know what wonderful results our suffering might bring. Paul and Silas, their actions during their suffering brought a whole family to accept the teachings of Jesus and be baptized. Is it possible that our sufferings might do the same? Amen. Very good, Joan. And Jeff Cavins has a YouTube talk very much like what Joan is talking about. If you want to Google it, it's very good. Got a cute email here. My grandfather worked in a blacksmith shop when he was a boy, and he used to tell us how he had toughened himself up so he could stand the rigors of blacksmithing. He said he would stand outside the house and with a five pound sack, potato sack in each hand, extend his arms straight out to his sides and hold them there as long as he could. He did this religiously for three weeks. After a while, he tried 10 pounds of potato sacks, then 50 pound potato sacks. And finally, he got to where he could lift a 100 pound potato sack in each hand and hold his arms straight out for a full minute. He never missed a day and performed this exercise in the hottest weather. He was determined to be the best blacksmith in the country. Does anyone know the conclusion? Eventually, he started putting potatoes in the sack. <laughs>